Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIII. Uh, I am going to go through this door right here. I've done just a little bit of leveling before I came into Evenhall, because as you may have noticed, I've been just a little under leveled in this area so far, and um, yeah, I like to be over leveled if anything. So uh, we're going to descend into Edenhall and take a look at what's in store for us. Now hopefully we can get there before the cavalry goes and uh, takes out Orphan. No, I don't want to save. I just saved. Alright. Oh, new merchandise. Cool. Eden Hall Reliquary. I just missed what that said. Anyways, you can go and read it. it looks kind of like a cathedral. A pretty cool place. Um, I don't really remember what this looks like very much. I haven't spent a lot of time here. This one kind of... I'm going to show it to you real quick because... Uh, oh, crap. Never mind. We aren't going to see it for long. Let's just say that. Where's the cavalry? If they made it this far, we'll see them soon enough. Whoa. Uh. Don't tell me that. Did they make the cavalry all into sacrifices? Not them too. They were all seeth. Well, there goes neighborhood. This area is pretty epic, if you ask me. Welcome to Orphan's Cradle, the throne of something. I was going to go all epic there, but this I is it. messed up. A lot of dreams died to get us here, and we can't let it be for nothing. You said it. It's not just our future we're fighting for. We'll do it for everyone. Fauci rule ends here. Dysley, we're coming for you! All right, let's take a look. Uh, let's first check out what we got in our new shops. Uh, Plautus Workshop. We've got uh, Terry's Deluxe, Rebel Heart, and Atrevini, and the Punisher. Well, I don't need any of those. Don't have any guild for them anyway. So, uh, um, okay. well, let's let's uh, let's back off for a second. If you get a preemptive on these guys, fight goes quite a bit easier. I mean, it's hard enough outside with just one or two of them. Uh, there we go. They're pretty easy to get a preemptive on. Um, just kind of run into their sides, they're pretty short sighted. And off we go. Now, uh, Orphan's Cradle is uh, a pretty cool place. Um, Basically, it's an alternate dimension that I think it analyzes the Just data flowing on, through Cocoon. Oh yeah, Sovereign Fist. Let's show that off a little bit. Um, been using it for a bit, but you guys haven't seen it, I don't think. Uh, if you saw my um, if you saw my leveling video, you probably saw High Wind from Fang her unique ability. 
And this is Snow's version of the high wind, his unique ability, Sovereign Fist. Yeah, that death attack, um, it rarely actually causes instant death. It causes a lot of pain. <laughs> um, it can bring your health way low, but uh, generally you're not going to die from it, from the death attack. But there is a percentage chance that you can, so you really got to be careful. Um, especially if they spam death or if they... Uh, target your leader. But yeah, there's like a 1% chance of it, so don't, don't be too scared of it. Basically, if they kill you with death, you can basically just come back and beat them the next time. It's not really that scary. And... Let's get rid of... There we go. Dagger and dead. Cool. Good job, Lightning. Now, this is a really good leveling spot. You can get a whole bunch of perfume and and scarletite from these guys. Uh, let's see if I can get a preemptive on them. Uh, I think I can go right now. There we go. Ah! Come on! His back was turned. Alright, so you will see that the fight is just a little more difficult when you don't have uh, a preemptive slits. Stick on diversity for a while, especially for yeah. Anathema really doesn't help out. Uh, one of the reasons I've got diversity going, even though I've got full health, is hope we'll cast Asuna and get rid of some of our debuffs. Um, as you can see, he's doing to himself. Or was doing to himself right then, and now we've all got debuffs. Awesome. So yeah. But anyways, he'll cure first. Um, so don't worry about having low health, because he's going to target uh, your health first, as long as he's not casting a Suna on someone. And uh, then he'll go and, and, yeah, there we go, Kuraja. Then he'll go and do a Suna on people, so it's really useful to, uh, to at least get slow off you. That's my least favorite one. We get slowly deep. Ah, crap. Both died. Um, let's see if I can get rid of this guy and now. Let's just do renew. I don't really want to. I don't think I've got the right uh, um, paradigms to heal him again, so. Renew just basically uh, brings everyone back to full health, and if you're dead, gives you half health. So, pretty useful. Last resort. I almost always forget those, so let's do that. And then... Um, how's it? Oh, that's deep I guess. Alright. Alright, so she's standing death now. Uh, twice on the same person. Come on, people. Stay away from hope. Go after our weakest party member. Cowards. I didn't think the cavalry were such cowards. Nice. Alright, let's see if we can't get rid of a couple of them. Or one of them, get it down to two. And let's switch to Solidarity for now to, to get them to cast death on me instead of on Hope. He can't, he can't take that kind of punishment. Uh, with my almost 9,000 HP, I kind of can last a little bit longer than hope. And, uh, Sovereign Fist. I will never give up! Never give up! Except when you do Sovereign Fist on someone who has full health and 100% Stire Edge. Great. Okay! <laughs> um, so with the High Wind and the Sovereign Fist, what you really want to do is, uh, get slow. Uh, get their Stire Gauge up as high as you can, um, obviously with your Ravagers, and uh, once the Stire Gauge is up to its max, they generally suggest 999.9%, well, how often are you going to get that on a normal battle? So uh, basically get it as high as you can, and um, 
wait till the health is below depending on what the style gauge is and a few other things I'm not really sure exactly what it is wait for it to be below about 200 it uh, 200,000 HP left and uh, generally he will do uh, 2,099,999 which is the max uh, which, by the way, this is the first time, other than my leveling that you've seen, that I've gotten to uh, max um, attack points. So, uh, yeah, he'll do he'll do uh, about 200,000 points worth of damage and kill them off. And if he doesn't, he'll get them pretty close to death, so you can finish him off with aggression or do that mess or whatever your paradigm of choice is. Uh, let's go back to Relentless. These guys, you really want to get them staggered, because... I mean, their, their defense stays the same, but you can launch them, and they stop casting Anathema, which is very annoying. And, uh... They're just a lot more fun to get rid of when they're staggered. Then let's go over and solve them fast. Just hold on, Sarah. And death. I love the so Sovereign Fist. It looks like Ruin is going everywhere. And we get some perfume. Okay, so... Let's take a look around. Um, I think I want to... Go and sell some of these perfumes. Um, there we go, three of them. Okay. So... We are going to move forward. This is one of my favorite areas with uh, all the data flowing by and just the look of it and everything. It's pretty cool. We'll get a, go to a waypoint. It looks like one of the statues. Yeah, it looks like an upgraded version of one of those statues, I guess. Um, I don't really know what these guys do, ladies, I guess, what they do. Uh, they may be guardians or sentinel, or not sentinels. I really like that effect. They may be stewards of Warfarin's Cradle. I'm not really sure what it is. But they provide these gates. I'll let the game do a little more explaining. <laughs> that... that looks like a gate to Grand Pulse. A last gift from Bartandalus? Nice gift, huh? <gasps> <gasps> and they will bring stages to us for us to explore and continue through Orphan's Cradle. Uh, if we're gonna run away, now's our chance. Hmm. So, guys, which way are we going? So we've basically got three choices. We can go to uh, Pulse. Um, right. I don't know what this gate is. Uh, I'm sure it becomes clear later on in the game, but for now we can't do that. Uh, so yeah, we can go over to Pulse, head that way. Or we can go back to Eden Hall and do some more leveling with the sacrifices and a few other things. Uh, I'm gonna take a look over this direction. Uh, this is our arrow, the way we should be heading. Um, I love how this this place turns from a cathedral to this futuristic data center and it still keeps the same kind of look. A little ruined though, but... Uh, we can head that way and she will do something for us. Let's see what's over on... This is where we came from, I guess. Um, doesn't look the same at all. <laughs> and this last arm is... Um, nothing, I guess. There might be something there later, I'm not sure. Anywho. Uh, you can do some leveling through here, 
the sacrifices show up if you go to the end of those arms and come back and uh, it's a little overpowered for us right now it's not very useful but I do need to head back to pulse uh, you really don't want to keep going until you've done a few more things for one I haven't gotten the R&D Depot retail network key card thing which has been bugging me to no end uh yeah so we're gonna head back and get that it's one of the marks and or missions or thief stones or whatever you want to call them and I will be showing you that here we go and we get warped to the Valus Media base camp so we can come over here and save and refresh our supplies or whatever you do at a base camp uh, let's do a little saving real quick um, let's do let's overwrite that old one I don't need to keep that one I've already beaten Bartandalus and published it and everything so and head on up towards um, remember when I showed you that cutscene with uh, not no not this way this way go takes you to the Arkel step uh, remember that'll take you back to Eden remember when I showed you that cutscene with Vanille and Hope and Hope telling Vanille that he is happy when she smiles this is this way. This is the way to Yashis Massif, which is a pretty interesting area. I'll show that off for you guys, uh, seeing as how I haven't shown it to you before. And these Alruns are really not much of a problem at this point for us. I mean, they weren't difficult when we first uh, encountered them. They're nowhere. They're not even a challenge at this point get some cruddy oils. Let's see if I can uh, avoid some of these battles. No need to fight when uh, I'm not getting any decent spoils from them. Especially Flan. I don't like Flan. Get right by them. Um, Y'all have already seen this area. Can I get by these guys? Oh, no. Corners me in the wall. Alright. These guys. Yeah, Hope can now take one out by himself. <laughs> As a Ravager. It's kind of funny. Just like I planned. Um Yeah. When I was playing my first time through, Ravagers were not as useful as they seem to be in this round. Maybe I'm uh maybe I'm just playing better, smarter or something. Upgrading things correctly. Who boy. Let's go around him. Don't need to fight him. I already got that chest. Uh, maybe I'm just playing better. Maybe... Maybe... Uh, I'm upgrading him correctly or something. I don't know. But... Uh, I never thought that... He would be able to one-shot those uh, cryohedrons. I've always used uh, Cerberus in my leveling. Yes! Got around them. Alright, so this is where we uh, found Hope the first time. Um, coming in through here, there is a treasure chest, which contains something. I'll figure that out later. I'm thinking of doing a, uh, a treasure guide, as someone suggested. And I'll definitely come around to all these treasure chests and tell you what, what was in them, or even show you me opening them, depending on what I decide to do. And a couple of flans. Let's get rid of them. Not too much difficulty. Yep. And see, see that two people going after one flan didn't do as much as one ravager. I just I don't really remember that being the case before. So onwards. Uh, some more alruns. Yeah, I tried to get by them. There was a wall in the way. Stupid wall. Alright. Blizzard, fire, blizzard. Yeah, 
Yeah. No problem. No problem. They're not. They're not too strong or anything. So more oils. And are we there yet? No. Hop over a couple of logs. There we are. The line on the map there. That's the boundary line. We can uh, go just across that line, and then we go into Yasha's Massive. Nice place. All right, onwards. The Subadran Highlands, Yasha's Massive. Nice little save station right here at the beginning. Music here is kind of nice. Couple of weak little enemies here. Let's go beat them up. Alright, some Layax and Langda, I think it's the other type in this area. They actually can summon larger enemies, so if if you're under leveled or coming here back in chapter 11, you can. Uh, what's all that? Looks like pulse machines that got broken down. Anyways, they can, you can take too long and they can summon stuff, like a behemoth king or other annoying enemies. Don't let them do that. Gorgonopsid? Two Gorgonopsid. Alright, uh... Again, easy, easy enemies at this point. Okay, uh, this area over here was where that cutscene took place somewhere in this area these are one of my least favorite enemies I don't know why as they're not very difficult but I just don't like them what are they? a draw? Triffid. Triffid. Uh, they're like the barbed specters from back when Lightning and Hope were going through the Gapra Whitewood what was that? chapter 5 or something? beginning of disc 2 and uh... I just don't like them I don't know why. Yeah, so this is where the the cutscene was. And if you take a look down there, there's a behemoth king. There's some Svarogs flying around, which I shall show you a battle with them soon, most likely. They are very, very dangerous for a uh, Chapter 11 unleveled party. Subscribe for another video tomorrow.